Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday, July the 25th. It's been a pretty good trading day. It's it's really looking like a range day at this point, just a little afternoon here. But, um, you know, it's been good movement in both directions. It hasn't been that slow and choppy. Um, really, basically, since the open, it's been we've been moving really well. So um, you had to pay attention to what was going on. But the moves have been great, and there's been several traps that have worked out really, really well. So if you notice them, uh, they were excellent entry opportunities. So, um, but anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the trades and see where we're going, uh, see what things look like, and show you what I saw. And there's only been a, you know, there hadn't been a lot of trades, at least not the ones that I liked, but. Um, the ones that are here have been, like I said, really good trades, and uh, uh, so let's just talk about them real quick. I uh, already had a quick distraction, but let's talk about the trades. Uh, the first one that I saw that I really liked uh, was right here. Notice that we got a double bottom, a big move up, first entry short, a little higher than the second entry short, so that's your failed second entry short. Um, it bound, it's, we broke out of the trend channel, we come back and tested it, so that's almost good for, always good for a scalp, and if you drew your little short term trend line, you would see that was the first break, uh, easy scalp, we didn't get much more on that one, uh, this one was really tempting, you didn't really want to take this trade because it's the first entry after we had a little failed break higher, uh, we did have a pretty good move down, so you really wanted to wait. And then there's no setup at all. You, I don't really like going short here. There really, if anything, you might have taken a short on this failed second entry long here. But by the time you get that much overlap, just sit tight and wait because they love to trap people on the wrong sides. And you can see what they did. Let me back out of here just a hair. And uh, you can see what they did right here. Let me move this out of the way. They brought, they came back to the original trend line right here, and uh, but also even if you didn't have that, you've got this double bottom in it. Notice that little double matching bottom right there, and we broke below it and turned up. You could have gone along right there. That's what I did. Uh, it took it a little bit to get going, but man, look at that move. Nice move, and um, you know it doesn't get much better than that one right there. And that's the kind you want, and that's where you look for this stuff to happen right off the trend line. And this, and you might have had your line more like that right there. Um, that actually fits a little better, I believe. Um, so, but anyway, you could have easily, you know, what I did was just draw this line right here off these two swings up here and pulled it down. And it fits perfectly so, and you know, so it fits for this right here. And I originally had it right there where you saw it, but it, you know, one tick's not that big a deal. Um, and you can see that's where we found resistance on the way back up to the tick. And so you know that's probably valid. But um, but I like this little trap, short trap here, another bounce. It was just a retest of those. You know, we, when you retest something twice and, and it fails, it's likely to... Uh, be successful going much further in the other direction so that's that's the idea behind the failed second entries and then notice we got a new low here and we're moving higher you got a you got this repeat right here first entry short second entry short they fail you go long right there again it takes it a little bit there's enough room there to get out it takes a little work because you're finding resistance up here but another easy scalp and then it starts selling off and um, there's a short here I wasn't sure about this one, but I took it because it's the trap again. Notice you got uh, a first entry long, pull back second entry long, it fails, and it failed pretty quickly. And you can see I bearish, so I had my stop waiting there. I was a little nervous when it, because I thought we might bounce right here, so I was going to be prepared to exit if it did, but no, it just went on down. I mean, those traps, I've learned those traps are that's probably one of the best trades you can find out there. They rarely, if ever, fail if you're really reading it right and you're seeing the actual trap. And, you know, people were looking to go long here on the bounce, but they don't realize that the support is way over here. And that trap allowed it to run a lot. That trap allowed, you know, trap so many people that they ran it on down a little further. And we got a break of the trend line, a retest, but we didn't make a high there. Um, 
But no, you generally when you get that, you may get another equal leg. It turned out to be more than another leg down. I would call that leg one, and so you were looking for leg two right in here, but you see we went a little further than that. But notice that we had this little channel working down. We overshot it, then we overshot it here. So we had a break outside. Um, this is a second entry short. You want to use a limit order here because there's some dojis and stuff, but when it broke blower right here, I dropped a limit order in here, and it came back and easily filled it a couple of ticks into that, and then it turns right back down. I didn't know it's going to, you don't know it's going to come all the way back down to here. I really thought we may find support right here, but it turned out the line is down here, and they come back. So even if you didn't have the channel, notice that they come back and test it. You don't want to be buying with prices hanging around down here. What they want to do is they ran everybody's stops and they trapped everybody. I actually like going long right here. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive, but it's a failed break below all these lows, and it jumped down there and it jumped back real quick. Um, I liked it. It's a little more aggressive, so I drew it. You know, I circled it in green, and uh, it was off to the races. And then guess what? Another failed second entry short when we've already had a trend line break, uh, a retest of the lows. You got this trap down here, so you really got people trapped. And you know, most of them are going to start exiting as you climb, but there's always that bunch that's going to wait till we break above these previous highs. And uh, this was probably the final. And then you see it took a few minutes to even get going there again. But they rarely fail. And then, man, again, you don't know what's going to do this. But that's why you use runners. And they were safe. And you ride this all the way back up here to the top. And then you got a little correction. This one was very tempting here. Um, I saw it setting up as I was doing my chart. The entry would have been 83 and a quarter, and if you didn't use a limit order there, you didn't quite get out of that one yet. Uh, but it was really tempting to want to go long there. I almost jumped back in, but I changed my mind and says, no, I'll wait, uh, because I didn't get it triggered before I saw it. I didn't get you know, a chance to use a limit order. It was already a tick or two up here, and I just that's too dangerous when you're getting close to the high. And you can see what happened. Um, my guess is we're still going to work on a new high here for this little channel, but you never know. That might be all we get right there. Or we could come way down before we try to make another run up. So, but that's what I saw today, and it was, you know, it was much easier unless you got hung up here. But notice all that overlap. you got to be careful with all that. Uh, that's why we don't enter in that. Um, and the only reason I liked going short here was the trap. And again, I was a little bit nervous, but I had my line down here. And it may be right there. You know, they both look pretty good. And so doing that, I figured we had enough room to scalp out before we touched here. But it went on through anyway, so it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, but you got to be careful because you don't want to get trapped in. And I also had to think about this little bit of support over here. But I'm more worried about this line because this is an uptrend. And uh, so, you know, you might, I might have even should have drawn that one in green. But these traps, I'm just telling you, uh, with especially if they're, you know, when people are looking for a bounce off places, there's certain places where these traps are really good. And this is one of them because people are looking for that pullback, this big move here, and they all missed out. So they're looking for a chance to enter. And it's the same thing right over here this big move and people miss out and so they're waiting on a chance to enter so you got to be patient because they may set up some traps and run some traps on you and bring it you know bring it back or it may not even go higher from here you just never know it's 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 looking like a range day and this line right here another reason to think we were going to here was that's the overnight that's where we closed yesterday and the market opened at 8:30 right in here so there's a gap right in there Notice that. That's what, if you were using the eight, you know, just the regular chart, that's what you would see. And this is where prices closed yesterday. So notice that gap. And guess where we went to? And that's as high as we've been able to, to close. We've, we've actually, prices have gone a little higher, but we've never been able to close higher than that yet. So um, that's what I'm always talking about, about that gap. So that's a clue that prices were going to try to get up there. I was surprised they didn't get there this time. Uh, but they came back and they trapped everybody out uh, and ran it right back up there again. And that's the way they operate. Uh, that's the way the ES operates. It does that. Um, they love to trap you and trick you and fool you in on the wrong side. And that's why 
people that use common sense trade in these markets have a hard time because common sense does not work. You have to understand what prices are doing and what they do and the tricks they play and uh, what's going on. So just keep that in mind. But yesterday, I get this question every now and then. People ask me, where do you enter? Well, you enter, whichever bar I circle is always the signal bar. Uh, and the, the entry is one tick above or below the signal bar. In this case, here's your signal bar right here when it, the price is broke higher and then turned back down. So this is your actual signal bar. You may wait on another bar to enter in some cases, but this is your signal bar, and your stop goes one or two ticks above it, and you're, you know, if your trade is triggered, but your entry is on a stop order one tick below that bar. Or if you're going up, it's one tick above that bar. In this case, this really was the setup. Prices broke lower and turned higher, so we had our stop sitting right above that bar, and it got filled pretty, you know, when it went by and went on. Normally, we wait for our signal bar to complete, but so this is really your kind of your setup right here on this one, but this is the lowest point, so your stop has to go below it. Same thing right here. This is your signal bar, and your stop goes below it, but to enter right here, where you enter is one tick above that, and but since this was a doji, what I like to oftentimes do is wait on prices to break higher and then drop a limit order right at the top or maybe a tick or two in. And in this case, you could have got filled at least a tick in on this before it went higher. And uh, and so, but generally we enter on stops. If you, if you try to use limit orders and wait for it to trigger and then drop your limit order in, you're going to miss a lot of good trades. So keep that in mind. But that was, you know, really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades today, and two of them might have been considered a little bit aggressive. So, and it was really tempting to go long here because there was a little trap, and if you did, it was good. I talked myself out of it because um, I didn't like all these overlapping bars here. And um, But it went lower first and then broke higher. So if you did, I'm actually going to circle that one in green. It's a little more aggressive. Um <clears throat> But I didn't take it, but there is a long, I think that would have worked. Let me just double check before I, the entry on the stop was 79.75, and you see it was 80, so it would have failed on you uh, if you didn't use a limit order there, and that's why I like to do that. But I'm going to leave it because if you saw that little trap and used a limit order, you probably were okay. But we hadn't had a break of this little down sloping trend line right here, and so that's why I didn't like going long right there, just that that was my reasoning. Uh, that and the fact that uh, <clears throat> we had all the overlap with the doges down here. So, <clears throat> but I'll leave it in in green. And really, once you start seeing these doges right here, uh, that would have been your clue to exit and take whatever it gave you and get the heck out because you can always re-enter up here if it goes higher again um, and gets back in the channel. So. Uh, that was my thinking anyway. So hopefully that answers some questions for you. Um, trying to think if we're about 13 minutes here. Uh, the main thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be selling down here at the strong support, and you got to be careful buying when you get close to up here. You got to buy these pullbacks, and you're better off to wait on a trap. Wait till notice that we got. I think those are matching lows, aren't they? Are they matching lows? Yeah, you see those two matching lows right there. For some reason, when you pull that away, they don't look like they're matching. But see if we don't get a little break below this bar or below those matching lows, and then it turns up with a second entry, and uh, you get a chance to enter down here where there's some support instead of entering up here where there's some resistance and then having to ride, ride out a couple of pullbacks before it goes higher or maybe even turns and goes lower for the rest of the day and traps you in there. So, and the same thing down here, when it gets too low, you can't be looking for shorts down here. you got to be careful. Um, but anyway, that's what I saw for the day. And um, I guess I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.